Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to edit a slideshow of photos together in Adobe Premiere Pro. So I've already got a bunch of JPEGs in my project media bin. And one thing you do want to note is I'm not just going to drag it right into the timeline to create a sequence because these photos are all different sizes. And when you do that, you'll just create a sequence of whatever size the photo was. What I'm actually going to do instead is go to File, New, Sequence. And here I can choose exactly the final output slideshow that I want. So oftentimes you might just need to be doing a 1080p, 1920 by 1080 standard high definition video. So I'll do that. And then I can go ahead and select all my clips or all my pictures and drag them into the photo. So I'm going to hold shift, just select them all and drag them. And you'll see when you drag them in, they're all going to be the same length. By default, it's about four, five seconds. But if you go to Premiere Pro Preference, you can always change the default under the timeline. So under the timeline preferences, you see still image default duration. Mine's set to five seconds. But if you know you wanted them all to be only two seconds at a time, you could do that and it would save you a lot of time trimming clips. So I'll press OK. I'll just leave mine at five seconds for this example. and. The next thing you notice is since most cameras shoot bigger than 1080 by 1920 photos, you have some room, especially if you shot raw, to scale and adjust things. So see how much room I have in the photo. Now this is up to your personal preference. Maybe you'd want to do a slideshow where you even have some borders around the edges and you had text displaying what something was. You could always do that. But in this case, I'm going to do a little bit of cropping, but zoom in. And one thing we can do to add life to these photos is click the scale icon here to toggle animation keyframes. You'll see that I'll create a little diamond right here. And then I can move forward to the end of the clip and I can maybe scale up just a little bit. And in doing that, we create that traditional gentle motion that happens in a clip. So it's just gently moving forward as I play. It's a little too fast. I can always go to these keyframes and adjust them down to my liking, but you get the idea. You can use scale. Another one you can do, especially sometimes you have vertical photos like this. You could maybe do position. So starting from this position and then just moving up a little bit. You could do that to add some motion. Each picture will kind of lend itself to its own kind of motion adjustment. Now you can go through and do them all by hand. Um, as long as you don't have too many photos, it wouldn't take too long. Or you can also, if you plan to be doing lots of slideshows, look into creating keyframe presets for different sort of presets. I have a tutorial all on presets if you want to check that out separately. But once you do have all your photos arranged and animated, and scaled and positioned how you like. Another thing you might want to do is add transitions between them all. Now a cool easy trick to do this instead of going between each cut is just highlighting the whole sequence of photos and pressing command D on your keyboard. And that'll just add the default transition. That's a really useful shortcut. And the default transition is just a cross dissolve. Now just like the default time length, you can also change the default transition. If you ever just go into the video transitions, let's say I didn't want to cross dissolve. I actually wanted, I don't know, a cube spin for some reason. I could right click and set that as the default transition. And then when I did the command D shortcut, it would all be cube spins. So from here, you can even add other touches on to the photo. Uh, one thing you can do is highlight everything once you're done and right click and then nest it all together into one nested sequence, which you'll see pop up in your project media bin. Now you can move this sequence of photos around, especially if you're editing photos and videos together. You can also double click on that at any time to see everything within it and drag them in or out. But one reason you might want to do this is maybe if you wanted to make the whole thing black and white, you could go into the Lumetri color and adjust that nested sequence. Or maybe if you wanted to give the whole thing a little bit of a vignette around the edges, you could do that and it would be a nice little touch. And you can even add effects on top of the whole thing. Let's say you wanted to give the whole thing a little bit of 
noise and grain for some reason. You could do that as well. So I think I'll leave it at that. That's a great start and workflow and you can take it from there. If you've enjoyed this video, check out my channel for tons of other video and photo editing tutorials. Subscribe to stay tuned for more. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.